must be held that we attempt in vain the way to a knowledge of the mind and the soul unless we distinguish the animate kingdom into its degrees and regard the degrees as one above the other. One above the other. Just as we regard the indefinite as above the finite, or differentials as above integers, or in somewhat the same way as we regard roots as above their powers. One above the other. Remaining in one degree only, and this a degree suited to the external organs, and setting no bounds between inferior degrees and superior, not entertaining any distinct idea of each, we wander in obscurities and make confusion between things themselves and the terms of things. We wander in obscurities. We wander in obscurities. For as soon as nature ascends from one degree to another, she slips, as it were, into things which to our senses are formless, that is to say, from the sphere of effects into causes, and from things posterior into things prior. qualities and quantities, except by means of mere analogies and eminences, which become indeterminable as compared with the determinate things that lie within the sphere of the activity of the external senses. Essences, modes, attributes, qualities, and quantities. of things, nature changes also their terms, for she never allows of being adequately expressed in one degree by the same signs of speech, whereby she is expressed in another. But if the same words are retained, there is something understood which is not expressed. There is something understood. When elevated to the sphere of another degree, nature seems as though elevated to another world, and there we almost fail to recognize her. We almost fail to recognize her. We are exceedingly rich in words whereby to signify things that fall within the sphere of the body, the external senses, and the ultimate world, but we become poorer and poorer in proportion as we strive to a higher sphere, and poor indeed when we strive to a sphere still higher, the sphere of the soul herself. of speech is lost, as it were, and we know not how to express specifically a single one of the soul's faculties by any adequate word or designated idea. What then shall we do? 
What then shall we do? What then shall we do? There is nothing else but to found an entirely new ontology and philosophy applicable to the degrees of which we have spoken. A philosophy which may be called a universal or philosophical mathesis. A true rational analysis. Mathematical and analytical philosophy of universals, degrees, and definites. The significative or technical speech or art of the soul. The significative or technical speech or art of the soul. A true rational analysis. What then shall we do? What then shall we do? What then shall we do? There is nothing else but to found an entirely new ontology and philosophy applicable to the degrees of which we have spoken. A philosophy which may be called a universal or philosophical mathesis. A mathematical and analytical philosophy of universals, degrees, indefinites, the significative or technical speech or art of the soul, or art of the soul, or art of the soul, or art of the soul. remain in the sphere of the ultimate degree where are found effects and phenomena and words with meanings adequate for the expression of all things. soul.